At Ball State University, we are committed to strengthening our community. With that strategic goal in mind, our university is implementing an ambitious plan to revitalize the village, beginning with the construction of a new performing arts center for our talented theater and dance students. I'm Ball State President Jeff Mearns, and this is Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. From the campus of Ball State University on Ball State PBS and Indiana Public Radio, this is Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. At Ball State University, our promise is simple, to empower the success of our students. Our students benefit from immersive learning, innovative academic programs, and state-of-the-art facilities. Ball State offers a distinctive yet affordable educational experience and the ideal environment to prepare for a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We inspire Cardinals to transform their communities, to revolutionize their industries, and to make a difference. We fly. Are you ready to fly? Hello, welcome to Cardinal Compass. I'm Vincent Mortarano. And I'm Emily Harless. Ball State University's Board of Trustees has approved a plan to revitalize the village, the area next to Ball State's campus. Because of consistent vacancies, five sites will be transformed to improve the environment in the village. Cameron Tomlinson spoke with faculty members about how Ball State plans to lead new economic development. As the conversations calm, audience members and the board find their seats in synchronicity. Front row sits Mayor Dan Reidenauer. It provides some additional housing options, which uh, we struggle with that. We've not had a lot of new housing, and uh, we've already discovered with some of the apartments downtown. Reidenauer said another advantage to the village revitalization is that an anchor will draw consumers in. Fairmount Properties CEO Randy Ruttenberg says the proposal integrates all five sites to create a sense of unity in the village. To look at each individual site, merchandise it, program it in a way that there would be synergy, amongst all five of those sites um, that they together would be able to draw not only the student population but the broader population. With the Performing Arts Center, Reidenauer says he believes current and new businesses will be able to thrive together. People are going to want to eat, they're going to want to get a cup of coffee, they're going to want to buy uh, souvenirs, they're going to want to do a number of things and we see that as a, as a great boom not only to Ball State but also to the city of London. Ruttenberg says while President Mearns wants the village for the entire community, he is focused on the students' priorities, encouraging Fairmount Properties to contact Student Affairs. To the, um, the representative from the student body and the board of directors, I've got uh, contact information right here, and we're going to be reaching out and kicking off that uh, discovery. While pre-development and programming starts now, construction is set to start in the winter of 2023-2024. Cameron Tomlinson, Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Jim Lowe, the Associate Vice President for Facilities Planning and Management for Ball State. Jim, what initiated the development for the local Ball State community and even more so the Muncie community? So let's start with the fact that the village has been in a state of decline for years, if not decades. There have been isolated cases of where uh, businesses have tried to come in and, and reestablish some vibrancy to the village. But I would say it wasn't until which time the president came in, we started to establish our new strategic plan 2040 that we implemented some verbiage about community engagement. And under that goal three community engagement was discussion about the village and putting vibrancy back in the village. So it's by virtue of that that we uh, move forward with trying to determine how you would do that. And I think our strategic, strategic plan on how to establish that vibrancy over five different sites um, came with um, the strategic plan as a driving force in the president's leadership. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what is the potential timeline of the new village district? What is the first thing that we're going to see built? So Let's talk a little bit about the timeline. We hope by December we have a development agreement, which will be approved by the Board of Trustees. We'll establish more so the defining of the five different sites. So in the spring of 2023, which is not far off, we hope to get state approvals to move forward with the different sites. And there are five sites. The sites that we're going to focus on first uh, include the site 
that is just east of the administration building, which we refer to as Site 1. That's where we're going to build the new Performing Arts Center, a hotel, a thematic sort of restaurant, retail space. The site just south of that we're referring to as Site 2 will be apartment complexes, some parking at that particular location. Those are the two sites we're going to focus on first with hopes that we sometime in 2025 we could see a lot of established uh, facilities. Yeah. Absolutely. So you talk about the Village District bringing in these five new sites. Which ones are being initiated and funded by Ball State? So I'm going to pull your question apart a little bit. Initiated, funded. Mm -hmm. They're all being initiated by Ball State University. So it's all five sites that we determined strategically had to be addressed to pro provide what we wanted to provide for the village in terms of its vibrancy and so forth. But it's particularly site one, which is where we're going to build the Performing Arts Center, that we will find a way to fund the new Performing Arts Center that will be connected to a hotel, that thematic restaurant, and that retail space. And we think those go together quite nicely at one location. So it's um, that particular pack, the Performing Arts Center, that we will find a way to fund. And Merns, I'll have you um, button here as well about the initiation and the funding by Ball State and kind of how you see that as a vision as well. Well, well so as Jim described, uh, we initiated this process of mm -hmm. developing a comprehensive vision right. for the village using all five sites. Um, we're going to focus our uh, <coughs> financial investment on the Performing Arts Center on, as Jim said, Site 1, which is the northeast corner of McKinley and University. That university investment we presently anticipate is about $40 million mm -hmm. to design and build uh, that wonderful new center. That We will leverage that investment, and we believe Fairmont Properties estimates it will invest about, and, about $100 million in the hotel and restaurant on right. Site 1, right. as well as the apartment, the retail, the restaurants, and the other activities on the other four sites. Absolutely, and either one of you can answer this one, but what immediate benefits do you see from this development in the village? Well, so I'll take a first shot, and Go then ahead. Jim Absolutely. can do it, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about that also in yeah. the second segment. Mm -hmm. uh, but the immediate benefit is enhancing the vibrancy of that commercial district, which is immediately adjacent to campus. We know that will help us attract and retain students. We know it will help us attract and retain outstanding faculty and staff. And we know it will help the city by bringing more people to the village to uh, go to restaurants, to go to retail shops, and uh, also very importantly, be a venue for our, our outstanding theater and dance students. They have been in need of that venue, and I know when we have the conversation later with Bill Jenkins, he can explain why that is so important to his program. Absolutely. So two words come to mind, stability, sustainability. And so what we want to bring is some sustainability to the village, so with that vibrancy comes some stability, but it's the sustainability that we think will come with the fact that we're looking at five sites and we're involving the current business owners. So they're going to become part of this plan so that the uh, village becomes a sustainable sort of area of campus now and into the future and helps us to move towards developing a better neighborhood around Ball State University. Yeah. Right, and let's, ex let's expand on that a little yeah. bit. So we've talked about how it's going to benefit students in the campus culture, but how is this also going to benefit the Muncie community? Well, so directly when that village becomes more vibrant and more businesses are operating mm -hmm. there successfully, that will help the tax ba uh, base here in the city. But you know, our university is the arts and culture hub for Muncie, Delaware County, and really for all East Central Indiana. Right. So this Performing Arts Center will complement what we provide in Sursa Hall, what we provide in the David Owsley Museum, what we provide in Emmons Auditorium, the Brown Planetarium, soon the Brown uh, Outdoor Amphitheater, the Glick Center for Glass, the Renard uh, Greenhouse. So this will be another attraction that we believe will bring, bring people from all over East Central Indiana to come to our campus to take advantage of the arts and culture opportunities and then take advantage of these restaurants and, right. and, and shops as well. Absolutely, and jumping over into site two a little bit like you were mentioning earlier, Jim, who do you imagine filling the site number two apartment complexes when they're built? So I'm going to add to your question if you don't mind. Absolutely. So site two and five are both sites that we hope to establish some housing stock. Site two will be more apartment type living for married couples, professionals, 
employees who, who live in, in, in the Muncie community, and we want to stay in the Muncie community. Site five will be more townhouse living, uh, owner-occupied, condo-type living. So we're, we're mixing it up a little bit to provide both apartment in site one, townhouses and condos in site five, but it's, it's being developed for that broad brush of, of uh, clientele, which is uh, professionals and so forth. Those who we want to keep in the community, students, when you graduate, keep in the community, stay here uh, and live in the village and enjoy what we have downtown. Yeah, and right. So it'll complement the housing options that already exist. As you mm -hmm. know, the village promenade is, is particularly attractive to our students. Right. The apartments that will be on that southeast corner of McKinley and University, right. site two, we hope will be attractive to employees of the hospital, employees of the university, mm -hmm. maybe graduate or married students. And then on site five, which is the site on the southeast perimeter of the village, as you go into the Riverside Normal neighborhood, we hope that will be owner-occupied housing, which right. will be attractive to an even broader audience. And we'll you know, connect the vibrancy of our campus and Ball Memorial with the vibrancy of downtown Muncie. Awesome. Well, Jim, thank you for joining thank us. You. The Department of Theater and Dance has been incredibly successful for years now. With many alumni out in the professional world making a name for themselves, the time has come to give them something special on the Ball State campus. Carol Porzuchek reports. The Department of Theater and Dance is finally getting more space to use. Students used to have to use Carmichael Hall, the circular building on the north side of campus. That was until the university tore it down to build a cluster of dorms. Professor of Dance Susan Coper says it hasn't been easy. It's, it's been a recurring challenge, um, most for faculty, but also students. Students need that space to, to rehearse, to practice, um, to work on their own um, projects. And it's just, um, with the amount of classes we have during the day, days, during our days and rehearsals at night, at night it's very, very challenging. Current students are excited to have a space that is fully dedicated to them. Though they have space in ball gym, it simply is not enough for such a growing department. Student Stephanie Bell says she is excited. With the new announcement of the new space coming, it's been very exciting for all the seniors um, to look at what's going to be left for the department that we all chose for a reason. We have a very highly ranked theater and dance department here that just the spaces currently don't support, so having that um, that new space really will support what amazing art is being done here. With the program growing each year, the future is bright, adding more opportunity for students and staff. <laughs> Kara Przewczek, Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Bill Jenkins, the chair of the Department of Theater and Dance. So the Theater and Dance Department has doubled in size since the fall of 1996, but you guys just recently lost Carmichael Hall as a rehearsal space. So what challenges has that created within your department? Well, the department currently occupies eight spaces on campus, if you can believe it. I mean, we have uh, really spread ourselves out because of the growth of the program, but also because of the specific needs that we have. We have accreditation issues related to space in our dance area, in our theater area, in our uh, musical theater area. So when we lost Carmichael Hall, we basically had to start using other facilities that the university generously gave us as short-term solutions for this ongoing space issue that we faced. We now are in the Oakwood facility, um, which is just off of campus where our students now go um, to do all of their rehearsals. Um, it does pose problems, as you can imagine, especially when we're in ball gym for our dance classes. Getting from ball gymnasium to Oakwood in a short amount of time is not exactly the easiest thing to do, um, even with the fabulous campus uh, bus system. But we work really hard to try to give our students the best possible spaces, but it is not possible when we are in a facility that ultimately was built before we even had a theater and dance major. It was still a minor at that point. Um, and so when you think about that being built in the early 60s, uh, the fact that we're in this position now is, is so gratifying and so exciting for all of us. Absolutely, and you just mentioned the growth. So do you believe that this growth has helped start the initiative of the overall concept? President Merge, you can also answer this as well. Well, actually, I think there's really kind of three converging forces. One is we have known at the university for many years that we need to do something to help revitalize the village. And so that's why we've been acquiring this property for many, many years. Second, the growth of the program, both in terms of size and prominence. And then third, as we started working with potential developers, we realized that there was an opportunity to meet the need for the program with a new performance center and use that uh, opportunity 
to catalyze growth and vibrancy in the village. So they all came together in a way that sometimes uh, challenges uh, are transformed into great opportunities. I think arts and culture has always been something that people have looked at as a way to spur growth spur economic development and also um, spur a sense of place that is important when you're recruiting students, when you're recruiting faculty, and frankly when we are recruiting people to be a part of this community that we've built in theater and dance. And I think that all of these things have con you know, converged at the right time and we just are fortunate to be in the position that we're in now after 20 plus years of going through what has been an, a really difficult space problem for us. Yeah, and let's talk about this new facility and specifically what does Ball State expect these new facilities to change for the students in the Department of Theater and Dance? I mean everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, we, as an example, we have a STEM program in our design technology area which is ultimately in facilities that are 55 years old. We don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the uh, ability to give those students, much like somebody who is uh, going into biology or chemistry, the laboratory space to do the work that they're doing. We have a top-notch dance and acting and musical theater programs that ultimately are in facilities that were built for academic classrooms, 600, 700 square feet. We have a second largest theater education program in the nation that ultimately has a close to a hundred percent placement rate where the students don't have a chance to interact with students in a setting that is ultimately conducive to what they're doing. So these programs, directing and stage management, getting to work in facilities like this, all of these programs across our, progr our, our entire department are going to exponentially grow from the ability to be working in spaces that are indicative of the quality of the work they're doing. For sure. And how do you feel like the new facility will truly improve both the program and the campus? Again, I think what we're, what we're selling much like athletics is how can we help the campus uh, have a vibrancy and a sense of place that will make it attractive to folks when they're coming. I, I just have this vision of parents um, and folks getting out in the Sursa garage, going to check into the hotel, having dinner, going across, seeing a show, spending time the next morning with their kids um, in the village. It's going to feel very much like a real destination for not only our faculty, students, parents, but I think for others who ultimately want to see great art and also want to see high quality um, students learning their craft and, and sort of being able to be a step away from Broadway or film or television or major dance companies, they're going to get a chance to see them uh, firsthand before they have that moment. Yeah, and President Burns, you can weigh in on that as well. How do you really think that this is going to benefit the campus? Well, well th this is a premier program that we have at Ball State. I mean, our students do wonderful performances while they're here on campus and many of our students when they graduate go perform on stages all across the country and on cruise ships all around yep. or all around the world and frankly <coughs> we haven't had the facilities that have enabled them to showcase their talent in a way that's comparable to their talent and yep. so the new performing arts center is the next step in providing those facilities once that building is completed and performances are being offered there, then we can work on some of these other rehearsal and, and practice spaces as well. So it's going to be a multi-phase process, but we're very excited for all of the reasons um, that Bill has described for these students who have worked under less than ideal circumstances for many, many years and have nevertheless continued to perform at such a very high level. Right. And in the announcement as well, it was mentioned that other groups will be able to use that rehearsal space and rent it out as well. So not only is it a new facility for you, but it's a new facility for them. So do we know yet how they're going to get access to that space? We don't know yet how that arrangement will work, and we actually really haven't begun those conversations. But, uh, but Bill and his faculty and staff and our students have good relationships with the Muncie Civic. We have close relationships with the Muncie Symphony Orchestra. So I'm sure there's going to be opportunities to work together with community programs. I also think it gives us an opportunity to bring in outside um, organizations during the summer months. We've talked about the fact that we don't have a, uh, a workshop or a summer program for incoming high school students as a recruitment possibility. The uh, opportunity to use our facility for that, the opportunity to use it for the Music for All program, which comes to campus every summer and have another facility for that. I just feel like the, the, the possibilities are endless and we're excited to partner with community and also I would say the greater community of the arts in general across the state and across the region. Absolutely, and what's a, with such a large plot of land being scaped out just for the placement of this facility, how do you feel about the location of where it is, just being right on the corner on the edge of campus and merging into the village? Perfect, it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to put it. I mean, if you could ideally pick the perfect spot 
to have this facility, this would be it. And again, we are indebted to President Mearns and the university for thinking so forward thinking about not just about how this will help our department, but how it can help the, the village and the entire Muncie community because I really feel like it's going to be a destination spot and our students that we're recruiting will see that the minute they walk in the door. You know, there's a lot of programs across the country who as soon as they talk about difficult decisions or cuts, they immediately cut the arts. And instead, this university is deciding to invest in that, which I think will, will pay large dividends in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And really quick as well, the building's construction is set to start in 2023, so how do we plan to accommodate students before that construction is finished? Unfortunately, we're going to have to continue to get by with the temporary arrangement, but I'm grateful that the students have been patient and will continue to work with us as we make this transition. I don't think the students will see any change in their education. <laughs> we've, we're used to dealing with uh, getting a lot with, with a little, and I think our students will continue yeah. that process. Awesome. Well, Bill, thank you so much. That's all we have time for for that part of the discussion. President Mearns, we want to give you the final minute for your reflection on today's conversation. Well, Vincent and Emily, thank you for giving me and Bill and Jim an opportunity to tell you and the community about this exciting opportunity. As we've talked about today, it's not just about serving our students and providing uh, a performance venue to, for them to showcase their talent. It's another step forward in our commitment to supporting the vibrancy of the communities that we serve. And by that, I mean not just here in Muncie, but also Delaware County and East Central Indiana. We like to see ourselves not simply as an anchor, but really as a catalytic agent for the improvement of these communities that we serve. And so I'm very excited about the opportunity. I'm grateful to the Board of Trustees and look forward to generating the support necessary to build this outstanding venue. So thank you. Well, thank you, President Mearns. I'm Emily Harless. And I'm Vincent Bonarano. Make sure to join us next time for Cardinal Compass Campus and Community Conversations. At Ball State University, we welcome you as a learning partner from day one. Our students bring creativity and determination to each aspect of the learning experience, from the classroom to the community. At Ball State, we help students turn an emerging passion into an enduring purpose. Our beautiful campus, welcoming environment, immersive learning, and collaborative culture provide the ideal place for you to pursue your journey to a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We fly. Are you ready to fly?